I did a video a while ago where I showed you what my global settings were in Power BI Desktop and also my preferred local settings. So you guys watch the video and ask me if I could update it. And I checked it actually four years ago. <laughs> so it does need updating. So let me show you what my new settings are. Okay, so let's start with the global settings. I have for data load, never detect column types. One of the best global settings ever. So what it does is in Power Query, every time you do a step, it will create a change step and it will, it will get you into trouble. So these make sure that that change step does not get added, which is great. The next one is background data. I don't allow data previews anymore. I, I just disable it once. And yes, it's a bit annoying that sometimes I have to click retry, but it works well. So I keep it like that. Parallel loading of tables, I have 16 gigabytes. I could add it. There's a maximum of 30. Um, I have 64 in the computer, but I think 16, you know, the thing is that if you have a supercomputer and you turn everything up to the max and then you give it to your customer and your customer has 16 gigabytes of RAM, which most cost computers have, and the thing is slow, what's the point? So 16 is good. Time intelligence, out of date time, another great, great, great feature that is disabled, obviously. And then this take cache that you can clean if you need to. Power Query Editor. I have everything enabled except for display preview contents using a monospace font. I'm not sure what the point of this is, so I don't have it all. <laughs> Direct query, nothing there. R script, I don't have R anymore. I do have Python, I have Anaconda. And it has detected Anaconda, but there's no point of using Python with Power BI the way they implemented it, so it's just there for show. It just, you know, detects it by itself, so fine. Security. I have on still the native database queries. So that means that if the query is trying to connect directly to a database, I want to give permission in case there is a drop or there is a insert or whatever, right? So you want to make sure that if something is trying to access your database, you know it. Certificate revocation, I have basic check. This I have moderate, which I think is the default. I haven't changed it. Data extensions, this is the custom connectors. I have them on, I have a custom connector, so I have them on. Custom visuals, um, security warning when adding a custom visual, what's the point? <laughs> no, I don't have it on. Uh, this use, do I have it on? I don't need our keys actually, so I can disable it now. Map and field map visuals, I do have it on. Authentication browser, I use Vivaldi, which is my new browser. And it's working fine, so that's perfect. Otherwise, you can actually like, exchange it. And then if you have trouble signing in, people are using this sign-in experience, and it seems to work. So if you ever have trouble, come in here and do that. When it comes to privacy, I still have combined data according to policies. I want to know what the policies actually are, so we're not leaking any data. And regional settings, I have for, you know, the use Windows default, which is English for me, for use the um, Power BI default, which is English, also the application language. And then this is also one of the greatest features that got introduced, and is use the standard DAG separators. You know that in the US and Europe, we like to do things the opposite. It's really annoying. So by having comma and dot as standard, it just helps everybody. Please, everybody, just turn this on. Updates, no. Updates every month. I don't need a reminder of that. Usage data, no. This is actually quite annoying because I disable it. And because this is the one that update, I update manually every month. I have two. I have the one that updates automatically and then this one that I update every month or when I want to update it. And this one, because I downloaded it every month, it, it just sometimes it turns it on by itself. I don't like that. So it was on again. I disabled it. Diagnostics, I use this only if I need to, if I run into trouble. Preview features, those are the preview features that I have on. Here's the thing. I have on, on object interaction, um, on my the Power BI that updates every month. 
In here, I don't. Why? Because there are settings that do not work on the other one. So I need to have both versions. So in the version that I update manually is the one that I don't have it on. On the other one, I do have it on. And then, yeah, I did have one drive in SharePoint. I find it a bit annoying, actually. So I don't want to disable it. Maybe I will enable it back. We'll see. And shape map visual has been there since probably 2014. Come on, Power BI team. You can do it. Update that thing. Like, what? Auto recovery, very, very useful. So this uh, saves the file every whatever minutes you put in and where you save it. Report settings, here's the thing. If you have the on object interaction uh, turn on, the new formatting pane on, your options are going to be different than this. This is when you have it off. And uh, I cannot show you, I was thinking, oh, I can show you because on the other one I have it on, but the things that, you know, they push it at an early version to me before it comes public and I never know what they do, so I don't want to show you in case I show you something that I shouldn't. So I'm sorry, but, you know, I think I have everything mostly on. Not, don't know. So visual options here, this off is so annoying. It's still when you turn it off, it's on sometimes. It's very, very annoying. Not good. Accessibility, I don't need it. Page alignment, I think this is the default. And then expand all subcategories by default. Oh, I didn't know that was there. They probably added when they added it for the new format page. Cool. I don't want it on. Uh, data load. This is for current files. So these are the global settings are every time you open Power BI, they will be applied. These ones are just for specifically this file. And data load, nothing. I don't want to have to detect anything. I always turn it off. Time intelligence, it turns off because it's already on the global settings. And here I don't do any changes. This is English Sweden. This is also by default. This is the combined. This is set by the global settings. You can change it here. Auto recovery, you can disable. I have enable on the global settings. Publish data set settings. This is mainly for direct query. Uh, if you need that, you'll go and check it out. This is when you have uh, also big data sets, direct query, like connections type of thing. You go here and turn on the settings. And these report settings, uh, let's see, don't allow end users to save filters on this file in Power BI service. You decide, depending on the type of job that you're doing, you might want this on or off. Um, I do have these sometimes, depending on what it is. I do have always these, and these change default visual interaction. It should be on the global settings. I've sent a thousand times is still not there. This should be by default. Export data. Uh, I think this is the default. You can change it if you need to. Allow users to change filter types. Enable search. This is by default. You can change it if you want to. Cross report read through. I turn it on only if I do have cross filter. Otherwise, I don't. I never turn on personalized vi uh, visualizations. Like, no. <laughs> Never ask me anybody to turn them on either. So yeah, develop a visual. This is if you are developing custom visuals. Um, no, I'm not doing that, so it's off. Modern visual tooltips on. This how to scale. You do it if you are using tooltips. Otherwise, you can leave it off. And default summarizations for aggregated fields. I think this is by default on, so you can just turn it off if you don't want to. So those are my settings. Now, let me know if you have a different setting that I don't and why. And I will see you again on the next video.